Welcome to our virtual classroom. So what we're going to talk about in this week's lesson is we're going to briefly recap Poisson regression and talk a little bit more about some of the stuff we talked about last week and then spend some time on what are the common problems encountered with Poisson regression and what are some of these solutions. And that's going to be more of a big picture overview with some of the details left to explore on your own through one of the R scripts if you'd like. Okay, so just a quick reminder that we saw that the outcome variable, outcome or the y variable, may be a count or a rate. And a reminder that we can think of the rate, which we denote lambda, as the count or the number of occurrences divided by t, the amount of time. So we may be choosing to model the number of times the event occurred or the rate at which the event occurred. And we said that if everyone has the exact same follow-up time, then we can just model the count, the number of times the event has occurred. If people have different follow-up times or different exposures, exposure times, then we need to model the rate. The number of occurrences divided by the unit of time. We also saw that our outcome variable may be recorded on an individual level, or it might be aggregated. Okay, so if the event can occur multiple times, um, then we can record data on an individual level. Right? The number of visits to a physician in a year, which is one of the data sets we were working with. If the event can only occur once, like birth, death, these sorts of things, or it's quite rare, we might need to aggregate and look at aggregated data. And we did that with the British doctor's data example. We were looking at the relationship between smoking and lung cancer, trying to estimate the lung cancer rate. Now, the regression model, the Poisson regression model that we fit, looks pretty much the same whether we're working with count data or rate data, but let's quickly remind ourselves of that. So if we're working with counts, then we can model the log count, or in this case, the log of y. Right? Uh, so maybe I should write this as well. We can also write this as y over t, the number of occurrences divided by the amount of time. So we can model the log number of occurrences as a linear function of the x's. Okay. And a reminder, we can also express this model on the scale of the count or y itself. We can model the count or the number of occurrences as an exponential function of the x variables. Then what we saw was if we were modeling a rate, if people are followed for a different amount of time, then we're going to want to model the log rate, which is the log number of occurrences divided by the unit of time the log of y over t, using a linear function of the x's. And again, we can think of expressing this on the scale of the rate itself, modeling the rate as an exponential function of the x variables. And a reminder, we said that when working with rates, this is what we're doing in concept. When we work with software, we need to do something slightly different. And we worked this out um, in the last lecture. Let's quickly recap that. We said the log of y over t can be written as the log of y minus the log of t equals b naught plus b1 x1 up to bk xk. And then we saw that we can bring the log of t over to the other side and model the log of y, b0 plus b1 x1, all the way up to bk xk, plus the log of time. And we said this here is called an offset. And so when working with software, this is the way we're going to fit the model. 
the log number of occurrences as a linear function of the x's, and we include the log time as an offset. Okay. And we talked about this previously. Um, we can think of this, if you want, the way I start to think of it when I learn this stuff is we want to model the log number of occurrences, but if everyone's been followed for a different amount of time, we need to kind of adjust for that different amount of time. Okay, so the offset we can think of as accounting for the different fall time in each individual. Okay, so let's take a look at the medical expenditures data. We'll fit, um, so a reminder, that data is looking at uh, the number of visits to a physician in one year. Everyone's been followed for one year. So we have count data measured on an individual level. So let's look at fitting a Poisson regression model in R, get the output, and then we'll come back to discussing some of that output. So now we're going to take a look at fitting a Poisson regression model to the medical expenditures data. We're not going to define a research question or look at model building and variable selection. We're just going to jump to using a few of the variables uh, mentioned below. So our outcome is going to be OFP, or the number of visits to a physician in the last year. As X variables, we're going to use the number of hospital stays in the year, self-perceived health status, coded as average, poor, or excellent, average being the reference, the number of chronic conditions, gender recorded as male or female, the number of years of education or schooling, as well as an indicator of if they have private insurance or not. I've already imported this data and attached it, so let's get to looking at fitting a model. Here we're using the glm command to fit the Poisson regression model and letting it know the family is Poisson for Poisson regression. So we've entered the variables we'd like to include in our model, Let's fit that model here, and then let's take a look at the summary. So we can see the summary output here, and let's take a little bit of time to talk about what we're seeing in this model and how to interpret some of the coefficients and so on. Okay, welcome back. So we fit the Poisson regression model using R, and here's the um, regression model equation that we got from there. And we're gonna take a quick moment to provide a few interpretations here. I guess this is very, Quickly, just direct interpretations of the coefficients. We can see things that increase the number of vis visits per year are more hospitalizations, mean more visits to a physician. Poor health increases um, the number of visits. More chronic conditions mean more visits. Um, more schooling, higher years of schooling, as well as having private insurance. Okay. Things that decrease the number of visits, having excellent self-perceived health decreases the number of visits and being male relative to being female decreases the number of visits. And again, a reminder, some of these coefficients or their interpretations may be biased due to confounding or associations with other variables. So right now we're just looking at the direct interpretation of these coefficients. Okay, let's take a moment to remind ourselves how we can get some rate ratios from this model and interpret those. So first we'll look at the coefficient for private insurance. So here we calculate the rate ratio for private insurance. And to do that, we exponentiate the coefficient for the private insurance uh, indicator. And if we work that out, that's going to come up to 1.22. And the interpretation of this, again, lots of ways you can provide an interpretation. I'm going to put one of them, but there's lots of other ways you could phrase this that would be completely correct. Those with private insurance, visit a physician 22% more often. And again, just a reminder, if we subtract one from the rate ratio, we can interpret it as a percentage change. Right? So 1.22 minus one is 0.2 or 22%. Right? So those with private insurance, visit a physician 22% more often than those without, those without, adjusting for all the variables in the model. So adjusting for the number of hospitalizations, the self-perceived health status, the number of chronic conditions, um, biological sex, the years of schooling, and I guess those. So again, just the interpretation would be 
taking two people who have the same number of hospitalizations, same self-perceived health status, same number of chronic conditions, same um, sex, same years of schooling, the one with private insurance is going to visit a physician 22% more often than one without in a given year. You could work out the rate ratio associated with biological sex, and if we exponentiate that, a negative 0.11, that's going to come out to be 0 0.89. Okay, you got a lot of ways you can interpret this. I'll just say it, I won't write this one down. If we subtract 1, we can say that males visit a physician 11% fewer times than females. Or males visit a physician 89% as often as a female. Let's take a moment to remind ourselves about estimating the rate. So if we want to estimate the number of visits or the number of visits in a year, we can think of the model when it's expressed um, on the scale of uh, an exponential function. So here, the number of visits is e, oh, and let's uh, specify some x values for that. So let's specify, or let's work out uh, the estimated number of visits, say, for someone who has zero hospitalizations, this has not been to the hospital at all in a year, whose health is average, whose number of chronic conditions is two, female, 10 years of schooling, and no private insurance. Okay, so in order to work that out, we know the number of visits is e to the 1.03 plus 0 0.16 times 0, right, no hospitalizations, minus 0 0.36 and their health is average. Okay, so the indicator for excellent is zero, plus 0 0.25 times zero. Again, right, their health is average, it's not poor. 0 0.15 times the number of chronic conditions, which is two, minus 0 0.11 times zero. Right, again, the indicator for male is gonna be zero. We're looking at a female here, plus 0 0.03 times 10 years of schooling, plus 0 0.20 times 0, right? They do not have private insurance, so the private insurance indicator is 0. If you work this all out, it should come out roughly to 4.9 visits in a year. Okay, so in using our model, we estimate that person with these um, values for their x variables, which are these demographics, is going to visit on average 4.9 times per year. Okay, so some things that we're going to skip over, but I'm going to mention now, is we haven't really defined a research question um, for this. We've just plugged in some data, looked at Poisson regression in the model, and talked about the parts. A uh, reminder that in general, models are usually either predictive, where we want to try and estimate the number of visits or the, uh, the rate, or we might be looking at an effect size model we want to estimate the effect of one variable on the outcome and adjust for other variables, you know, confounders and so on. The way we go about building a model and selecting variables is the same as it was before. Okay, so if we're building an effect size model, the way we define and check for confounders is the same. Um, effect modifiers, um, using the likelihood ratio test to compare nested models or using the likelihood ratio test to test if an effect modification term is statistically significant. All that stuff is the exact same. So we're going to not spend time talking about that part, and what we're going to do instead is get into talking about uh, some of the commonly encountered problems in Poisson regression and how we can address those. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.